Good morning, Faith Family. Welcome to our midweek devotion. I'm Tammy, one of the pastoral team members for Life Groups Ministry. Imagine coming to church one day and you ask to meet Pastor Reuben. And so I go and I tell him about it. But this is what he says to me. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. Hmm, you might be thinking, what kind of a response is that? And what am I supposed to tell you? Well, that was exactly what Jesus said to Philip and Andrew in John chapter 12, verses 24 to 26, who informed him that some Greeks wanted to meet with him. And Jesus often does that, doesn't he? Not directly us answering questions. So how do we understand this? Well, Jesus' strange talk about seeds falling into the ground and dying was in fact the beginning of his answer. It connects to verse 32 later as you read the passage, where he says that he will be lifted from the earth and draw all people to himself. At that time, the Greeks hadn't been given the official channel to become his followers yet. So he's inferring to something much deeper than just having a conversation with him. That if the Greeks want to benefit fully from what he has been sent on earth to do, the only way was for him to carry out and complete what seems to a human mind as a strange mission that his Father in heaven had given to him. And by what he did, he would unify both Jews and Gentiles, giving them the truest and deepest access to him that God intended. They wouldn't just see him by the physical eye or be in physical presence with him, but will be drawn to him by the powerful love of God, drawn into fellowship and into new life. But this new life isn't an easy one. In talking about seeds being planted, he wasn't just talking about his own sacrifice. He was opening the way for anyone who wants to believe him to follow in his footsteps and to risk everything in their service for him. So how does that apply to us? Just as the seed must fall to the ground and die to produce much fruit, we are called to let go of our own selfish desires and ambitions to truly live for God and bear spiritual fruit. This also means that we must be willing to make sacrifices and take risks for our faith. It's about prioritizing our spiritual growth and service to others over our own comfort and security. And so at this point, you probably be expecting the follow-up question to be, oh no, the church is asking me, what do I need to let go of to truly live for God and bear fruit? Well, before we get there, I thought about sacrifices. And I recall that God doesn't want rote sacrifices or superficial obedience. In fact, God dealt harshly with those who weren't sincere in their offerings in the Old Testament. Even in the New Testament, Jesus never forced anyone to follow him. He was firm in, and his teachings were challenging. But that was the purpose. It sifts out the true believers from those with ulterior motives or shallow believers. God wants wholehearted, sincere allegiance, not because I am God and you must obey me, but the obedience that comes out of a heart that is soft and true in our love for Him. Every biblical character who sacrificed something for God was because they knew God, they had a genuine relationship with God and loved God wholly. Remember Paul? Who in their right mind would go through all that pain and all that suffering for no prestige, no money, no, nor any gain if he was not motivated by true love for God? Remember Abraham? Why would he go with God's seemingly absurd request 
to make his beloved son a live offering if he did not trust God. And what about David? He waited for his time to be king while he was being pursued by his predecessor and didn't take the many opportunities to get rid of this person who was not only in his way to kingship, but was trying to kill him. God doesn't force us to love him, and any sacrifices made to him must be out of a genuine love for him, not out of obligation. So I suppose that the question that I need to ask myself, and perhaps you might need to ask yourself, is how deep is my love for God? Because I believe that once we settle that, the rightful sacrifice and obedience will follow, one that will please the Lord. For some of us, it may look like a reprioritizing of our lives and schedules so that we can serve Him, or to be honest with ourselves and God on something that He wants to work within us on. It may be that we become more willing to see each other through the lens and heart of God, and hopefully, it will mean that more of us be willing to die to our selfish desires and ambitions to carry the cross for Jesus. The Lord does not delight in blind or obligatory sacrifices. He wants obedience that comes out of our true love for Him. It is, in fact, about offering our whole self as a sacrifice, as we read in Romans 12. Jesus' obedience is an expression of his love for God. He didn't obey to prove his love because there wasn't a need to. He was already loved. The love, of God, uh, the love of God isn't something that we do to obtain or to prove. It is something that we receive and experience. When we are so filled with the love of God, when we understand the fullness of the love of God for us, and allow it to restore our lost identities as his precious sons and daughters, all that Jesus asks of us will be a natural expression of it, not trying or striving to prove our love for God. Please join me in prayer. Our Abba Father, we come before you open and willing to receive the love that you so greatly pour out on us. Restore us to our identities as your precious sons and daughters so that we can come to that deep understanding of who you have made us. And as we experience the Father's love from you, free us to love you in the way that will bring a smile to your face. We pray in, the son, in your Son's most precious name. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day.